Yes, this is a weird thing. Isn't this weird? No. Hence the term black hole. Yeah? You're talking out loud. Okay. As opposed to talking like in the head. <laughs> yeah? Do you do both? In the head and then out loud? Do you ever confuse them? Do you ever say something that you wish you hadn't said out loud? Oh, my God. B on the... How do you get in? That's the question. See if we can get the B. Here. I know. We need that one beekeeper. Maybe I think I can get him in the tube without pissing him off. You're going to piss him off. No, I won't piss him off. He won't sting everybody. I hope he doesn't drop on me. Oh, he will. Come here, dude. Check out this tube. <laughs> Climb in the tube. Be a nice bee. Whoa. He's a big bee. Is he a mad bee? Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hiding. Oh wait. Hold on. Where is he? On the tail of that thing? Oh yeah, I see him right there. All right. Here we go. Dun dun. Da -da. What uh? You want to see? Stay there! Bad B. B on the ceiling. If my dog were here, she'd be going crazy. She eats bees. We don't know why this is. But like, no, no, she like stalks bumblebees and then like eats them. Never seems to get stung, our dog. So like, if she's a border collie blue healer. I have seen her jump and do an 18 inch vertical jump and snap a bee out of the air. She's like this, snap, like, oh, I'm back, right? She's totally afraid of like motorcycles and anything else. Fireworks, totally afraid. Bees, she is like savage, bees. Okay, do we, uh, have we all seen this calculation? Are we okay? Okay, this is, do we know what it means? It's the point, it's how far, how close you can get to a black hole before you cannot escape, right? Yeah, your cell, it's, it's when your cell phone's gonna stop working. There you go, okay? You'll be able to hear things coming in from outside, but you're not gonna be able to send anything back out, right? Okay, now, the second thing, and 8.1, by the way, 8.1 and 8.2 in your, data, in your little uh, worksheet thing, that's, that has to do with this stuff, right? So, the other thing that's, that's going on here is that if you're in a frame that's accelerating, let's just imagine that we're accelerating, right? And here's this clock up here. Let's suppose the clock is flashing, okay? Well, if it flashes once every second, let's say it flashes, aren't I gonna see the flash, the, 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 the last flash, aren't I gonna see it sooner than a second because I'm accelerating, aren't I? And I'll be moving, and so the, the, what I'll do is I'll cover some of this distance, right? And I'll see it a little sooner than a second, won't I? Well, I, won't I move into its path? If I sat still, it would take a second to reach me or something like that, right? Or I'd see the flashes every second, right? But if I move toward it, don't I see it a little sooner than I would otherwise? Yeah, yeah I believe I do, yes? Okay, because I, I come to meet it. It's like if you're walking toward me and I come to meet you, I see you sooner, right? Now, if I'm in an accelerating frame of reference, you have to apply your brain, okay? If I'm in an accelerating frame of reference, I'm always going faster and faster, so I'm always going farther and farther to meet it, aren't I? The next time they flash, I'm gonna be going even faster, and I'm gonna go even farther, and I'm gonna see it even sooner, aren't I? I will always, on the average, and this is a weird thing in a gravity field, I will always, if it's above me, 
see its time is going faster. And if it's below me, if I look down, I will see clocks below me in a gravity field running slower. Now, this is a tiny, minuscule effect on the surface of the Earth. Okay? But if you're near a neutron star, and the reason, by the way, we know this, is that we see radiation from perfectly good things like hydrogen atoms, and when they're near gravitational fields, this is called gravitational redshift. We see the oscillations of it, the colored lines, right? The oscillations are at a lower frequency, right? So this is, this is a, a very cool thing, right? Um, they, I think they've taken atomic clocks. I don't think, I know that they've done the speed effect, like they put an atomic clock on an airplane and it did run slower, right? I don't know that they've put like one at a different elevation and had Earth's gravity make them, but they're incredibly sensitive. They may have done that, right? Da -da -da. This is uh, from Richard Feynman's book. Blah, blah, blah. There we go, right? So basically, if an acceleration can do that, then gravity does this. Anything that acceleration explains, gravity explains, right? And the key here is that a high clock is going to run fast, right? High clocks are fast, right? Because you're always, if it's above you and you're accelerating toward it, you're always seeing it a little bit sooner, a little bit sooner, right? Okay? And a low clock is going to run slow for the same reason. You're always going to be moving away from it and farther each time, right? So you always see it a little bit later, right? Low clocks run slow, that's the easiest thing to remember. And then here is, here is the approximate formula for this, that the shift in frequency, right? So the change in frequency, and I think you have this in your note guide, is to the original frequency, right? As g times, and this g is not gonna be like 9.8, it's gonna be whatever the gravity is where you are, it could be millions of meters per second squared, like near a neutron star or something like that, right? Times whatever the change in height is. And again, this is over C squared. Now, let me just for a second show you what this really is. This should have an M on it. You recognize the numerator, don't you? What is MGH? Isn't that just gravity? Gravitational potential energy? Didn't we learn that recently? Okay, and what is MC squared? Is that energy too? Yeah, this is the ratio, by the way, of, of um, gravitational potential to like total energy if you were to turn the mass into energy, right? That's what's going on here. So it's crazy stuff. So I think, don't you have another example? You have this in your little note guide. Let's put this example in there, right? A radio station at the bottom of a 320 meter tall building broadcasts at 93.4 megahertz. What is the change in frequency from the top to the bottom? What frequency do they tune at at the top? Well, the radio stations down there, we're at the top. So isn't it a low clock? Won't it run slow? Yeah, yeah so whatever shift in frequency we get, we're going to make it less than that. It's going to be a slow, low clock, right? Okay, from the bottom to the top. And then the frequency they tune to at the top will be a little bit less, right? So let's, um, I think we do this twice. Let's do it with gravity to show you that it really doesn't change very much, right? So let's plug the numbers in here. Um, the change in frequency over, I'm going to go 93.4 megahertz. So 93.4 times 10 to the sixth hertz, that's what that means. That's the frequency, right? Is 9.8 times 320 over 3 times 10 to the eighth squared. So take your calculator, you're going to go this times this divided by this, and then you're going to multiply by that, right? Take your calculator and calculate that. 9.8. Yeah, you could use that one. Okay, times 9. I'm getting that this is remarkably small. I'm getting this number to be something like 3.25 times 10 to the minus sixth hertz. Yeah? Do you suppose that that's not gonna make any difference at all? And that probably there's no radio receiver on the surface of the planet that could measure a change of 3.2 parts per million in a 93.4 million cycle a second. Signal, yeah? This is like parts 
per 